Hello everyone, from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Thank you for joining us. Normally, you would see Wes Talon and Lena Hardy sitting in these chairs, but this month we are taking over. We are the summer interns working for the county. During our internships, we have visited different county departments, and this is our opportunity to work with DCTV 23. Each of us has been given free reign to design a five-minute segment of any interest we have. So, here we go. Thanks for watching. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. I'm John Pilgrim. I attend the University of West Georgia as a political science major. Today, I'm sitting down with Douglas County Commission Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones to talk more in depth about the internship program. Thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you for having me today, John. Of course. Uh, what's inspired you to host this internship program? You know, I always believe in lifelong learning. Uh, my uh, doctorate is in education and I have just embraced that all through my life. And my administration, uh, we decided that we wanted to give our youth an opportunity to uh, learn mm -hmm. because life uh, long learning is very important and it allows you all to prepare for your future right. uh, as interns. And I believe you are a political science major. I am. And you are just at the right time uh, for this uh, program because as you embark upon your, embark upon your future, I'm quite sure that this program will be uh, memorable for you. It allow you to uh, peel back the onion and look at local government and as you progress into federal government or state government you will have an idea how the entire system work. Uh, also I believe that this program was very important for uh, me. It, it, it was personal. wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that our uh, youth have an opportunity to, to grow under my leadership here in Douglas County. I would like to say I'm proud that this is the first inaugural class uh, I look forward to hosting a class in, in the future during my administration. And uh, again, I'm just so glad that you are one of my students. Well, thank you. Um, so you would say it's lived up to your expectations? Absolutely. You know, of course, we had to uh, develop a curriculum. Uh, as a professor in the past, I had to, uh, actually, a syllabus, mm -hmm. for example, had to develop some structure for this to allow you to learn and rather, I didn't want you all just sitting around, so therefore we've done some quite interesting things this year, or should I say for this uh, season, uh, for your internship. We've gone to several uh, departments because I needed you to understand not only just the, the BOC, my particular role, but wanted you to look at other roles within the organization to see how it all folds together. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's uh, something that I enjoy. I look forward mm -hmm. to doing it again. And next year I'll maybe be able to, to tone it up or shore it up just a little more. Right. Because the, you all are my um, inaugural class again, so this is, uh, again, we all are learning together, but it's something that I uh, believe that's important in Douglas County. And I believe that this uh, program will um, set the standard for uh, other opportunities here in Douglas County. Right. And uh, speaking of toning it up and showing it up, do you have anything like specific that you have planned for next time, maybe that you were going to change? Uh, the things that I may, something that I may change is I would like the interns to, to actually uh, work directly in the office probably mm -hmm. a little more with me. And, and, and this season is not over for you all because right. I have some other plans. But you will be, I want you to read. I noticed that uh, my millennials for some reason don't like to read. So I tried to make it interesting and uh, we uh, have gone on uh, the computer and found some interesting political games for you all to play and mm -hmm. I noticed that that was very intriguing to our program so if I had an opportunity or should I say for the future I will base my it'll be learning based around things that are computer applications more than reading because I, I handed each of you all a journal when you walked in and uh, I think everybody said oh this makes us sleepy but I promise you uh, next year we'll have everything more automated and more computerized because what I want to do is focus on the millennials because that's what you all like, informatics, uh, uh, computerized items and applications. So I, I, I will shore that up. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you. Next up is a Nia Gibson segment. So please stay right here. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. 
My name is Anai Gibson. I am an upcoming sophomore at the University of Georgia as an intended journalism major. I am a summer intern for the Board of Commissioners under Commissioner Kelly Robinson. My topic is something that I personally feel is important, integrative therapy. To integrate something means to unify individual pieces together. Integrative therapy is a practice of medicine that focuses on mind, soul, and body and brings them all together. It incorporates them all into your healing practice rather than just prescribing an over-the-counter medicine. It deals with ways to help overall and not just where it hurts. Examples of this include aromatherapy, stretching, praying, meditation, yoga, acupuncture, music therapy, basically your feel goods. I have applied integrative therapy to my own life. When I'm having a bad day, I'll listen to my favorite song or dance around my room like a crazy person. I may light a candle and relax. Mental therapy. Your mental health is just as important as any ligament or bone in your body because it is basically your body's compass. Your body follows your mind. If you are feeling a certain kind of way or aren't in the best of thoughts, then your body will follow suit and be out of sorts. The beauty of integrative therapy is that you can feel better physically if you start mentally. It's your psyche over physicality. There are multiple locations that practice this kind of therapy in Georgia. Douglas County does not have an integrative therapy institution. However, you could very well practice it in your own home. If you're having a rough time, take out a coloring book and color. It doesn't have to be a cartoon book. They now have adult coloring books because it is said to help with stress. Stretching, exercise, breathing exercises, smelling the roses, they all help with your psyche. They all can bring you back to your normal so that you can conquer whatever it is that you need to overcome. I hope this helps grasp the important concepts of integrative therapy and incorporate it into your life. Spread the word and help others by pointing them in this direction. Thanks for your attention. Up next is Isaac Miller. This is AZ700 on DCTV23. I'm Isaac Miller. I'm a junior at Douglas County High School, and I have an interest in film as a possible career. It's because of this interest in film that I was curious about the film scene in Douglas. I decided to ask Ms. Colin Cash, the county's director of tourism, to join me. Thank you for coming in today. You're quite welcome, Isaac. So, when did the movie scene become active in Douglas County? Well, we had some early filming back in the 70s and 80s, a couple of small things. Um, there was a small scene from Driving Miss Daisy that was filmed here, and uh, kind of rumor has it that there were some parts of Smokey and the Bandit up and down I-20. But really, it didn't get started in high gear until about 2013 when our old Douglas County Jail was decommissioned when everyone had moved into the new jail and suddenly the old jail was there and it became like a really popular place for filming. So, do you expect this activity to increase over the years? Absolutely. Um, it's going to increase if for no other reason than um, I am actively out there promoting it um, in addition to promoting our film trail which I hope I get a chance to talk to you about um, we also actively go out and to networking events where we meet um, production companies and other people that are you know in the movie and film business and I have these little cards oh. to tell you about you know why filming in Douglas County so I'm out there pounding the pavement um, so it's definitely going to increase for that reason, but also film is just really, really big in Georgia. Um, you may have read in the news locally l recently that um, Georgia has taken over. I mean, we're we're beating California and New York now as far as doing film, and Douglas County is right there in the middle of it. So, how does this affect the local economy? Well. First off, when the film crews come in, they're going to need to buy supplies and things like that. They're going to stay here. Um, some of them, obviously the big stars, 
don't stay with us. We're still working on that. Um, but the big stars will stay probably, you know, in Atlanta. But um, the film crews and all the people associated with, a lot of them stay here. So while they're staying here, they're also going to buy gas. They're going to buy food. Um, they're going to run down to the local hardware store and buy supplies for the filming. And then once the film has um, been released, and we're able to tell people about it, we add them to our Douglas County Film Trail. And then we promote that, hey, look at all these great things that have been filmed here in our county. And that will draw visitors in. Again, those visitors are gonna come in here, they're gonna buy gas, they're gonna stop at the store, you know, get something for their kid that they forgot. Hopefully they're gonna stay in our hotels, they're gonna eat in our restaurants, and they're gonna spread that money around our economy. So that's two different ways that having the film industry here helps our economy. That just sounds wonderful. So what all movies and TV shows have been filmed in Douglas County? Oh wow, there have been, including like commercials, independent films, student films, and things like that, we've had like over 700 things filmed here, yeah. Um, but a lot of those you've never heard of, a lot of them probably never even made it to the screen. But some of the more popular and well-known things that were filmed here, um, Stranger Things is on Netflix right now, everybody's all a buzz yes. on that. Um, and they filmed a lot of season one and then came back and did season two, which will be coming up soon. Um, there's another new show called Stand Against Evil that is on um, another cable channel. It's pretty popular. They're working on season two. Um, the movie The Founder, which was the story of Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, they did a lot of their filming here. Um, a lot of local people may remember seeing a old-fashioned McDonald's built in downtown Douglasville, right. And then um, some newer things that have just come out. There's the uh, biopic on the um, rapper Tupac, and it's called All Eyes on Me. If you watch that, everything you see that's a jail scene was filmed in our Douglas County Jail. Oh. So those are just a few, few of the things. Um, a lot of investigative discovery uh, TV shows, um, a lot of things at the jail, although the jail's not the only place where we get filming. All right, well, thank you for this information. Oh, you're welcome. All right, now please stay with us for intern Brianna Butler's segment. This is 8700 on DC TV 23. I'm intern Brianna Butler, and I chose to talk to you about public health, a career field in which I'm interested. So many people seem to be unaware of the field of public health and what it means. The Centers for Disease Control defines public health as the science of protecting and improving the health of families and communities through promotion of healthy lifestyles, research for disease, injury prevention, and the detection and control of infectious diseases. People have a sense of what public health is, they just don't know that they do. When you go out to eat at a restaurant and see a score hanging up, that score comes from a public health worker that ensures businesses are taking the necessary steps to function as a sanitary business. When there was an outbreak of the Ebola virus in West Africa in 2014, you saw constant updates on the news pertaining to the spread of the virus the number of cases and how many U.S. natives were in the area or potentially could have been at risk. The people who studied the disease patterns are public health workers called epidemiologists. Most people know of more narrow healthcare positions such as doctors, nurses, therapists, and other similar positions, but not about the public health side of the medical field. Public health is the backbone of the healthcare field. This field exists in order to lower the cases of chronic diseases, focus on disease management, be active in community health, and take preventative measures to keep from developing diseases due to lifestyle choices. People in this workforce hold the responsibility of educating the population on information detrimental to their health so that they have the resources and knowledge needed to carry out a healthy lifestyle. The different areas of public health are usually separated as biostatistics, epidemiology, community health, environmental health, and health policy. Biostatistics refers to the side of statistics that deal with biology and data relevant to people. You see biostatistics anytime you see numbers relating to a population. Epidemiology refers to the study of the disease patterns. Community health pertains to noticing health problems within a certain community and taking steps to correct the problem. Environmental health is the side of public health that refers to dangerous hazards within the environment such as air pollution, water pollution, hazards in the workplace, or even in your own home. 
And lastly, health policy refers to the side of public health that consists of the actions and plans put in place to reach health care goals within society. Public health really is the glue that holds the healthcare care field together. Thanks for your attention. Last but not least, Tabria Cobb will present her segment next. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. My name is Tabria Cobb and I am an intern in the Board of Commissioner's Office. I will be graduating in the fall from Clayton State University with a degree in English and African American Studies. Joining me in the studio today is Mr. Lewis E. Cobb Sr. Lewis is a trailblazer in the community who has been very impactful since the early 60s. I asked Mr. Cobb to be here because he is my grandfather and a role model. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so Mr. Lewis, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, first I am Lewis Cobb, senior, and I pr reside at 6853 Up Shamir Road, Douglasville. And that's about me and, okay. Oh, well, what are some of your biggest accomplishments here in Douglas County? Well, I would say my biggest accomplishment was in the community. I saw a need for some things that we needed and I built a little complex a little beauty shop, a little barber shop, and a little food place. So I, that's one of the, my accomplishments and I'm, that I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're, you're pretty big in sports, so could you tell me about your, your golfing and baseball accomplishments? Yes. Well, golf, I'm an avid golf fan now, used to be a player, but I'm proud to say I was the first black player to integrate the West Pines Golf Club. And uh, Raymond Wortham was one of the, the fa my favorite players that really just busted the door open for me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Him and uh, 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 Virgil Hammett. So that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. And as I was there, then I become a member of the West Pines Golf. And lo and behold, in three years I won the club championship. I was a pretty good golfer back then. What about baseball? Well, I was really a good baseball fan and a player. Mm -hmm. I had, a, we had a semi-pro team in South Corp. And uh, we played there a little bit. I was playing manager. And then a team here in Douglasville was about to go under. And uh, so they asked me, would, would, I just, would we just merge? So we merged and so we became the Douglasville Twins. And that, that was in the, what they call it, the Josh Gibson League and later the Hank Aaron League. And it was real good baseball players in there, mm -hmm. African American. And you recently you went and spoke with the Braves. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. We was you have to be mindful what you say when you even when you're working. Mm -hmm. We were out working. Of course, I'm a concrete finisher, and we were doing a concrete job. And. And we were talking about the guys like Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, all just shooting the bull around. And the guy we were working for was listening. And uh, and he he asked later on. He said, "You have that kind of knowledge of the black baseball players?" I said, "Yes, I do." So then he wanted me to come to a luncheon with the Braves. 
and speak about the, the Negro League, the Black League. So I did, and I'm proud of it. Well, how have um, how has some of your accomplishments um, impacted your children? I know, um, like specifically with my dad, he has a concrete business that that you kind of paved the way for. Well, well, I'm glad you asked that because you are uh, what come what has come back in what you said, uh, Thomas, my son. Uh, he worked for me, and he learned everything that I learned and more. So, and he's better. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the one thing that I'm proud of, of passing it on to the next generation. And as far as being a business manager with your daughters in their hair salon and your your um, your son, who is now past um, Lewis Jr., with his community choir, you also manage them. So, how has that had? Well, how has that effect been on your life? Proud. Well, I'm really pr proud to have done those things. Mm -hmm. uh, it learned me to be a better Christian because Lewis was a true Christian and a minister, young minister before he passed. And uh, and he was just getting into the music business real good, and I was the business manager for him, relatively spending money for him. <laughs> so, and I liked it, and uh, and I hope that impact my other kids in the beauty shop and all. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Granddaddy. I've, it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. Thanks for being involved in your local government. We are the 2017 Summer Interns, and this has been 8700 on DCTV23. Thanks for watching.